So let me get this straight. Not only do we have a bug problem, but we also have a dragonfly problem. Your Majesty gets a flamen Vetha. I'm Demetrius, and welcome to the Bermakian Podcast. This is an episodic review series where I can review anything, but not everything. That includes monster movies, both big and small, anime, and video games. This week is Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, the G-Annihilation Strategy. A mouthful of a name that is. Somehow, some way, there is no background info on the wiki page. I don't know if someone who edited the wiki page forgot, got lazy, or both. But with little information that I managed to find, thank you Kaiju Noir, I can tell you what happened in the background of this film. After the release of Godzilla 2000 Millennium in December of 1999, the reaction, as I mentioned in my last review, was not great. In fact, the Japanese audiences did not like it. The US version was received a little better, but even in its theatrical release here in the States, it did not do so well at the box office. And it's a shame too because director Takeo Okurawa did not return to direct anything after Godzilla 2000. He's probably living a happy life right now. Good on him. So, at the end of Godzilla 2000, the film kind of left off on an ending where you would expect there to be a sequel to it, right? Well, here's the thing. For some reason, Toho decided to go the anthology route, meaning different injuries would be set in different continuities with the original Godzilla as the basis to go off on. Well, let's see how it goes. Mizaki Tezuka was hired as the director, and Miss Michiru Oshima was hired as the film's composer. So, when Godzilla vs. Megaguirus, the G-Annihilation strategy, premiered in Japan on December 16, 2000, what was the Japanese reaction to it? Well, it was more positive than the previous film. Let's look at the plot synopsis and see if they're right. Japan creates an artificial black hole device to trap Godzilla forever, but a test of the device creates new foes for Godzilla, car-sized dragonflies called Meganula and their queen, Megaguirus.
I don't know what the Japanese see in this movie, but I can pretty much tell you that this film isn't perfect. Far from it. Flawed in many areas. Let's start with this one. The original Godzilla never died and the oxygen destroyer was never used. Imagine what it would be like if Dr. Serizawa decided after all of these years gained the courage to use the device on Godzilla for real. Well, aside from the opening 20 minutes, the film went into the other direction and the film became a massive disappointment. The characters really suffered. They could have been something, but they ended up as nothing. The main female lead is a one-trick pony, and she's been addicted to the male side character, and he's the best part. He gives off more personality than the main character. In fact, he should have been the main character. The others range from okay to completely obvious, like the one who engineered the plasma lab, saw it from a mile away. Godzilla in this, design-wise, is the same from the previous film with a few adjustments, the biggest being his skin. I do not like the fact that it's more of a brighter green. Because of the lighting in G2K, you barely noticed that he was green. However, Kitagawa did a tremendous job giving his majesty much more range in emotions and reactions, especially during the fight scene with Megagirus. Speaking of, it has an interesting design but lackluster execution, and I wish the prop was done much better. And I can pretty much say the same thing about the special effects in general. I don't know what it is, but it feels like everything was rushed. Some interesting money shots, sure, like when the female lead was riding on Godzilla's back, but as a whole, I've seen better. Though, in saying all of that, holy shit, the music is great. Oshima's Godzilla theme, right from the drums to the trombones to the march that accompanies it, is a joy to the ears, and my body says I heard it in my home theater, which is in my room. Overall, Godzilla vs. Megagirus is a very disappointing effort, much on the same level as Raids Again. If it had used the concept that I mentioned earlier, it would have been easily one of the greats. But as it stands, it's a film that really should not be watched on a second viewing. You know, talking about the original Godzilla is really exhausting. However, would you believe me that the original was killed and then came back from the dead? I'll leave off on that cliffhanger. Thank you all for watching slash listening. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more of the Bermakian podcast. While you're at it, check out my other content. Your support makes a difference. This has been Demetrius signing off and hail to the king.